of what's working or not, because I found the switch was wired wrong. Which could have been a reason why everything else was blown in there. Right? The things that blew, not so much the things that just rotted out. Uh, I said, he said, we can buy a new switch. If I buy a new switch and it's wired wrong, how am I going to wire it? Do you have a wiring diagram? Uh, I don't know. It might come with the switch. Come on. So anyway, I got nowhere fast. So I find out now that tech support knows nothing. They're just a parts seller. Uh, Kim had told me four people were working on it. The only good thing that was told to me was I can just order what I need. Okay, so I've got about two weeks into this thing now. We're, we're getting into May of 2022. <coughs> Not long after of me still trying to putz around and fix things, trying to figure things out, uh, I said, okay. Well, I went for coffee, and I hear, don't spend any money. There's no budget for coaching. There's no money. What happened to order what you need? You know, there's no money for coasting. Don't spend any money. <coughs> so Coasty sat there. So while sitting there, I figured, well, let's let me putz around with it. It's here. So I was putzing around with it. You know, and the more I putz with it, the more I'm finding wrong with it. And the more of a pain in the ass it's becoming to be. Uh, I did find, however, that uh, one of the water pumps was bad. The pump for the air, for the horn, that was bad. So the horn's not going to work. Uh, the bulbs and the lights were working, so that was a start. The ones for the eyes weren't uh, all that great. Hey, baby. So anyway... Don't buy anything. So that's basically where I was at. Now I still punched around with a few little things thinking, okay, if it's just a transistor, a capacitor, a diode, you know, those are nickels and dimes. Well, they used to be. Now they're, you know, one, two, three dollars, but still, you know, something that I wouldn't mind pulling out of my pocket if I had to. But it was starting to get more than that. But meanwhile, it sat back there. Next thing I know, about two weeks before open house, this is in November now. Open house, I think, was like the 12th or so. I Don't quote me on that. But um, it was one of those things to where uh, I get a call saying, uh, do you think you can have it ready for open house? I says, I haven't been working on it, you know. Oh, wait, let me back up a little bit in my defense. Sorry, guys. Um, I first get a call saying, you got a budget of $250. A couple days, two days, three days later, I get a call. Can you have it ready for open house? This is a couple weeks away now. Yeah, you know, now all of a sudden, you know. But meanwhile, and can you at least, you know, get a camera ready? Well, I don't know if you guys remember the body work on this thing, but every, not so much cleats for tie-down, but the, what you would normally use to tie it up at a dock with and things, or tow it, um, which are there for decoration only, but apparently they used it for tying her down in the trailer when they were driving and so on. So you tighten it up and this thing moves along and the next thing you know, these things are pulling out and the fiberglass is not thick enough, it's not supported. All right, for that, all right, and they're not supposed to be used for that. Underneath, it has the hooks for tie-down. But that means you'd have to get down and look. <coughs> <coughs> so the 
user manual apparently nobody looked at. So uh, at that point, I said, well, I'll see what I can do. You know, but, you know, I mean, I go to Home Depot and uh, I can't just use latex paint. There's some oil bases that you can use, but this thing is going to be, you know, kind of used and abused. So the best thing to use would be something that's going to take a little bit of abuse and give you a nice hard sheen. So that would be topside. It's a paint made for both sorts. So now they can't mix the colors. So I had to mix the colors. So I finally got the colors really close. <coughs> and that work came out with the body work. I had to do all the, the body work. I had to, you know, the, the reshaping of the nose because that was all crushed in and that, so I had to reshape all that. Again, it's all on film or on uh, whatever you want to call it. And, uh, and so I had to sand down the whole thing after that. You know, this is not an easy task. Because some of this stuff, you can't just paint over it and wait 10 minutes to go back over it again. You have to wait for it to actually dry. Otherwise, you know, if you don't, even if you wait, we'll say 10 hours, you know, and it tells you uh, recommended before resanding, you know, 24 hours. Because when you put on a second coat, sometimes you have to fine sand the first coat so that the second coat's going to stick as well as give you a better finish, you know. Uh, so you can put paint on that thing, and then the fresh paint, even though the other paint feels dry to the touch, is going to loosen that paint up, you know. Uh, and the next thing you know, you're going to have all these little scaly-looking bubbles, you know, like if you put lacquer thinner on a, on a thing of paint, you know, kind of like this scales up. So it takes a while. you got to pay attention to these things. And then you got to tape it, because when I'm painting the blue, I don't want to get it on the white. When I'm painting the white, I don't want to get it on the blue. When I'm painting the black, I don't want to get it on the white or the blue. You know, uh, the horn, even though it didn't work, it was scratching a hole in the top, so I had to build a bracket to get the horn up, up so it doesn't scratch. I had to get that done. There's a lot of things I had to do. You know, so I finally got a camera ready and got it down there the night before. And when I got it down there, the day before actually, uh, I had the voice module working. Uh, Ray had found a piece that he was able to buy for cheap. Uh, so that we kind of came in with the budget. Uh, so at that point, everything was fine. Uh, and we got it down there. So the voice module changer, so you can talk like Mickey Mouse or Darth Vader um, on a headset. It sounds like it's coming from Coasty. And uh, Coasty's pretty and everything, and everything seems to be fine. You know, and uh, the lights, I don't remember. I think I had the light on a switch, but I, I don't want to say on the lights. But at least, you know, if you can open the eyes manually, and if somebody goes, you know, a kid or something, you can take the picture with it, and you're able to talk to the child in whatever voice you want to talk in. Well, next thing I know when it was over, um, it wasn't talking anymore. <laughs> All right, you know, so can you take it back? I bring it back. You know, what am I doing though? I'm going to take it back for what? To fix the voice module? I mean, you know. Well, it's back and it sits there. You know, and this was mid to end November. You know, and then, uh, yeah, it was around mid November. And uh, I hear, well, I got another $250 budget. Well, if I knew I had a $500 budget to start with, I may have been able to order some parts, you know, the actual pieces, and make them work. I don't know, all right, because, again, the main board. But at least it would have given me a little hope. So what did I get? I bought the wheels, 80 bucks. Um... Ray bought that other piece that was 50 bucks. Uh, I bought a module, a regulator module, it was 30 bucks. 
you know, and it just, you know, but now we have to make all this work. You know, it has the wheels, uh, they were a little bit, they were a lot better, but they were a little bit, well, they weren't even bigger. Um, they were a little bit deeper, the axle where it fits in. So the axle that came with Coasty didn't work. It was short by about an inch. Luckily, I had an axle over there. You know, not, you know, I mean, it's, it's not cheap, but they're not expensive. You know, but I had an axle over there. So I said, well, okay, I'll put that one in and I'll take the other one. And that's what I did. You know, and then, uh, all right, now, can you have it ready? Yeah, here we go again. <laughs> yeah, so again, we go nuts. And as you can see it, we had the lights working, we had the eyes working, we had the lights in the eyes working. I had it going, the wheels turning, forward and reverse, when it was lifted up on a piece of wood. So I had that done. That was working. The squirter was working, the strobe light was working, the spotlight was working, the meter to tell you, now the meter doesn't mean anything to anybody other than the operator, but you hit the button and it tells you how much voltage you have left in the battery. Well, this is working. I bring it down there and they told me that uh, nothing worked, except for the lights on the eyes, and they went bad after a while anyway. Well, hello, I went down there to get the top off it, because that's all I need now, uh, because I worked it so that the top has got most of the components in it. And when I'm down there, I find out that they left the switch on. So the battery is constantly under a load. It's dead, it's dead, and it's dead dead. I don't know if it'll ever come back, because they left it on for days, and boom. A battery. Turn it off. Charge it, check it. Okay, you know, don't leave the lights on all day, you know. But again, that's where we ended up. So I got the top of Coasty here that I picked up last week um, because again, most of it can be done. Everything that was working except for the drive should be working when I hook everything back up here. So we'll see what happens. But meanwhile, back at the ranch, that's kind of where we're at. I haven't done too much to it yet uh, because I want to kind of like, there she is. But it's not taking up a lot of room now. I got it on the table. I can shove it in the back over there if I need to, and we're all set. Now, here's the story. Here's what I think that's going on here because Ray nor I have gotten any money, and so far... You know, I put out about 115, Ray put out 51, 52, uh, and it's been since, uh, what was it, March, no, I forgot now, it's been about five, six weeks, and we haven't seen any uh, Cash on Monday. So uh, I'm thinking they're thinking, well, you know what? If it's not working, why are we going to pay them? If that's the attitude you're going to take, you know. And, you know, Ray and myself, uh, and I don't want to pat myself on the back, but myself more than anything at this point, because uh, I've had it here and I've been working on it on and off, on and off, on and off. And here we are, what, May of 2023? I think it was May, maybe it was May 2nd they needed it because they were having a big uh, open house thing or something again. All right, and they wanted to know if it'll be ready. And I said, well, you know, I haven't test driven it yet because for me to test drive it, I would have to put it in the trailer that I had here then get the tractor hooked up to the trailer, pull the trailer out to the street, take it out of the trailer to try it on the street, and then put it back in the trailer if it does or doesn't, 
all right, and then bring it back into the yard again because I can't leave the trailer out in the driveway because it's it's government trailer. So I got to bring it back in the yard again. So I mean, yeah, we're talking getting it off the bench onto the trailer. Darlene and myself were out there at nine o'clock in the pouring rain, putting this thing onto the trailer because you know that was the weekend that I was up for like 30 hours. So, all right, I gotta leave this on because it's not done yet. All right, well, so we're just gonna let you sit there and do what you gotta do. I'm gonna close this right there, though. I'm gonna do it. All right, so anyway, that's the saga.